The present history of Libya starts with the liberation of the country by the Western Allies during World War II. On this day, Libya started on the road toward national independence. It was to be a long road, a tough road. For the cost of war had been heavy. Libya had to rebuild to clear away the debris of battle. And once the job was done, Libya looked toward independence. It was to be four years of hard work before Libya's dream was to be achieved. During those years in the United Nations, various plans were to be proposed concerning Libya's status. In 1945, the United States had proposed a temporary United Nations trusteeship, with Libya gaining independence after a short period. But communist Russia had counter-proposed that she be granted sole authority over Tripolitania. In such a manner, progress had been blocked until November 21st, 1949, when the United Nations voted on a resolution to create an independent Libya. The Russian delegate announced he was against this resolution for an independent Libya. The assembly listened as the delegate from the United Kingdom spoke in favor of the resolution. was called for, and with communist Russia not voting, the resolution carried 48 to 1. With the arrival of a plane at a Libyan airport, the United Nations resolution began to take shape. A United Nations commissioner, aided by an advisory council, was now in Libya to help establish an independent government. The commissioner was Adrian Pelt of the Netherlands. The commissioner and the advisory council had headquarters in Tripoli. On the commissioner's advisory council were representatives from Tripolitania, Cyrenaica, Fazan, France, Italy, the United Kingdom, Egypt, Pakistan, the United States, and one minority group delegate. but they did not remain long within the four walls of their headquarters. They traveled throughout Libya. They talked to thousands of people, trying to absorb the problems, gauge reactions, judge what type of government the people needed and wanted. Cyrenaicans, Tripolitanians, the Fezzanese, the council saw them all and sensed the very traditions which would have to be protected in the formation of a new state. Yet despite the diversity of areas, there was a strong spirit of Libyan nationalism. This too the United Nations Council sensed and noted. By train, plane, auto, and on foot, the United Nations survey covered thousands of miles. The United Nations Commissioner and the Advisory Council were warmly received throughout the territory. The high point of the trip was a visit to Benghazi, where the delegates paid a call on the Emir of Cyrenaica. The visitors were received in front of the Emir's palace. The delegates were welcomed into the palace, and later, on the balcony, they conferred with the Emir the sage Muslim leader who personifies the Libyan spirit. The Emir stated his full support for the United Nations resolution providing for the independence of Libya.
soon afterwards, the united nations group returned to its headquarters.